Hey everybody, it's Brian here with Engadget. Uh, we are, we're back, we're here at the CES stage. There's, uh, there's a, a tour happening there. There's a lot happening all around us. Uh, there's a lot gonna be happening on the stage right now. I apologize that we're running a little bit behind, but it's for very good reason, because I've got Colin Engel, the CEO of iRobot here, and we told you you couldn't come to our stage if you didn't show us some robots. <laughs> Well, everywhere I travel, you know, I have to bring the robots yeah. and, uh, you know, I got the vacuum cleaner salesman thing going. It's quite, quite literally, it's nice, it's nice, you know, it's nice being able to keep the, the hotel room clean though, I assume, right? Well, you know, when there's a good party, it's good to have a robot. Yeah, I, that, that, that's what I want next from you guys. I want a truly portable one of these. I know that that's going to be problematic with design. The, the, the tank is not going to be nearly large enough, but how nice would that be, right? Absolutely. Well, you know, the cleaning is something that so many people would prefer not to do, and that is our mission, to yeah. go and, and uh, take it away and to do it as well if, as you could do it. So, so, so this is the Roomba. This is, this, this is and has been for a very long time your flagship product, the product that, that you're known for, and um, for obvious reasons, the most copied product. You know, I, um, I, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of other brands with, you know, spherical vacuuming robots. How do, how do you continue to differentiate yourself from, you know, the eight, eight million companies that are currently involved in vacuuming robots? Well, you see, as a robot company, this is all we do. We're passionately focused on trying to solve real problems with robots. It's not like we do anything else. Yeah. So that if, if the, we can't maintain a lead, we can't create the next, important feature to, con to consumers, then, then yes, we do have an issue. But as a result of the over 10 million robots, 10 million Roombas that we've sold 11 years, we have a really good idea about what are the problems. And this is our newest Roomba. And, and what is cool about this, isn't that it talks, isn't that uh, it, you know, it's, it looks beautiful. It's a really geeky thing. We've obsoleted brushes. Yeah. The year, for 150 years, your upright vacuum cleaner has had bristle brushes. You've still, you've still got a little bit on this side yeah, right got here. This, it's a side brush, but this is, <laughs> this is the business end yeah. right here. The idea that the bristle brush is just a bad idea. It uh, gets clogged with hair. As you pull a vacuum through the bristle brush, if you think about it, the bristles slow down the air and diminish the effectiveness of the vacuum in the robot. And, and, and you know, more than that, as I was saying to you, I've got one of these uh, at my apartment. I, I did a review of this unit, and I have, I have pets. Uh, I've, I've got a lot of hair around the apartment, and that's, I mean, that, that for me is the really problematic part of having the bristles at the bottom. Absolutely, so what we did, we invented a solid, uh, a solid brush. We call it the Aeroforce Extractor, and what it does, we designed this took five, six years to figure out how to solve the hair problem, and it was by getting rid of the bristles. And this echelon shape allows these, these uh, uh, cones, or the cylinders, to pick up debris as well as the old bristle brushes did. But if it's hair, it doesn't get stuck. It goes into the bin. It doesn't get wrapped around the core of the brush and cause a problem. And then something else really cool happened. Because it's solid, we pull the vacuum between these two cylinders and like putting your thumb over a, a hose to increase the velocity of the water so you can spray your brother, um, we accelerate the air going between these brushes which makes the robot able to pick up 50% better than our old Roomba. So we solve two huge problems so so, so so I've got to ask you why why were why were you the company to solve it? There's a lot of a lot of people. There's a lot of vacuum companies out there that have been doing it for much longer than you have. Mm -hmm. um, you know why why is a relatively upstart company the ones to kind of tackle that problem? Well, I think that you know if you think about what is what is robot technology, right? It's not voice and video over IP. It's not touchscreen displays. It's building robots creating navigation systems and perception systems for robots and manipulation. And believe it or not, creating a system to reach down and pick up dust and grime off the ground is a manipulation challenge. And so that our 24 years of experience creating uh, systems, different ways of picking things up, 
uh, gave us the mindset to solve this in a new way. Does, com does coming at it from, I mean, you've been obviously doing it for some time, does, but does approaching it from the outside, it, does that help as well? Well, the, um, the, the technology that got us going in this direction, to answer your question obtusely, was something we called the slime robot. Okay. So the slime robot is a, a bag filled with a material that if you pull a vacuum on it, solidifies into a hard, uh, hard object. And why is that cool? Well, if you try to think about building a hand, it's really hard. You've got all these different muscles, different yeah. degrees of freedom. But if I could have a bag of slime, which I could put over an object, solidify, and pick up, well, that's a different yeah. approach to picking things up. And that bag of slime actually only costs a few dollars. And so that it makes manipulation a more accessible thing. So when we looked at this problem, it's like, well, what if we had squishy cylinders? And because the idea of having a narrow gap between the cylinder is great for accelerating the airflow, it's great for the hair, but then what about the Cheerios? What about the marbles? What about the larger debris? So we need to come up with something that will work both as an air airflow accelerator, but also, you can see I can stick my thumbs here and they um, are in, entrained and, and uh, pulled into the robot as well. So it absolutely was taking a different approach to solving these manipulation problems um, that said, okay, well, why do you need a brush? Why not try something completely different? And we did, it worked really well. Actually, it worked really bad at first, uh, but over time, we uh, turned this uh, idea into something that is probably the biggest revolution in vacuuming since the robot. So this is this is where we get to have a little fun, right? This is All right. Well, you got a demo, right? Yeah, yeah. We got we got. Because uh, talk is cheap. We got some off-brand. I don't know if I can mention the name of the, the brand of the cereal. So we got some uh, some Toastios. The Toastios, right? Put well, on you the, know. Uh, table. Now this really brings me back, because because when we first launched Roomba, I went all around the country with a hand of the, these these the cereal, and I put it on the floor, and I go and pound it in, and. You got a good job, Colin. You got to feel like a <laughs> like a, a vacuum cleaner salesman sometimes, um, but you turn on the yeah. robot and uh, let her go, and um, I mean, the I mean, to me, the really impressive thing of what we're watching right now is this is a really tight space, and I keep expecting this thing to just to just drive right over the edge. <laughs> well, you see, even the fine crumbs here, uh, the, those cylinders, you wouldn't expect to work it to work. You might, gee, I need brushes. No, the Aeroforce extractors get it, and. Um, yeah, the edge detection works pretty well, too. And th th this is something I, I guess I, I, I didn't really quite grasp until I, I had one of these. Um, but, but I guess I, I always sort of assumed that it was going to go in more of a straight path, that it was going to really take care of one area at a time. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm guessing there's some you know, relatively complex algorithms working here to get this thing to clean an entire room. Well, we designed the navigation system, actually, Originally, it came out of a, a DARPA mine hunting program where the idea that, um, well, their coverage is at a premium if you're looking for mines. And so we both had to guarantee that we got everywhere, but we also wanted to make sure that we cleaned. And if you think about vacuuming with an upright vacuum cleaner, you don't go in a fixed pattern. Why? Because even with 1,000 watts coming from the wall, one pass over a dirty area doesn't clean it. So we needed to make a system which would allow us to go multiple times over the same area, three times, four times, five times, I don't care, eight times, as long as there's dirt there to pick up. So why not, instead of something that just goes in a strict pattern and yay, in an empty room, you can go over there once, why not instead create a system that has sensors in it which actually detect whether or not the robot is picking something up, so there's a sensor right down at the bottom of the robot which listens for debris coming in. There's a second sensor uh, in, the, in the dust bin across here which determine whether dust bunnies or cotton and things like that are being picked up. And this robot will relentlessly go over the same area again and again and again until it's clean, which is what you would do. And that's why the cleaning performance is as well is as is powerful and as strong as it as it uh, we've we've uh, delivered with a robot.
So, so as far as as far as form factor and <clears throat> really to a degree as far as uh, functionality is concerned, the, the the Roomba and the Scuba aren't you know entirely different beasts. Yes. I'm I'm, I'm wondering if the challenges are entirely different though. You know the <coughs> coverage is the same for both. The uh, the and now, I and now the um, the gates work across cross platform, which I appreciate. That's right. So, the, right the the um, the Roomba. If you say okay, well I only wanted to do part of my room, or I don't want to go down the hall and I don't have a door, we had to solve a problem and create a virtual wall, which sends out a beam of light that uh, this little guy right here, this lens, can see in the robot, just turns itself around and goes the other way. It allows people to use this metaphor of a, of a, of a wall, and um, uh, you know, it's just a little coffee cup uh, shaped device which shoots some infrared light across that, that makes it all work. So. That's the same. The, uh, our newest uh, robot, the, uh, the Scuba, has, you can see has the same lensing system. Mm -hmm. to, so that's compatible. So, so, but the know, business end is all different. Yeah, but you weren't starting from scratch with this one. You had, you had, you had some nice stuff in place that you, that you could use as a starting off point. Correct, and what, um, what we've got here is the, the brand new iRobot Scuba. I'm already, because we're running behind, we're already getting the wrap up right now, so let, let's let's demo this. All right, we let's go. We got Diet Pepsi and Cheerios. We got Diet Pepsi. Takes me right there, back here's to your, your scrubbing, your floor scrubbing robot. So the idea is you've got a tank here where which has clean water, dirty water comes out on this side. I put it's the really eager to clean. Yeah, yeah it wants to clean. So this is, uh, you know, we should mention right now, obviously, we're very short on time, so we're not going to watch the entire process. Can, can you take us through, you know, if we were sitting on stage for half an hour, what we would see? All right, so this robot is designed to scrub your floor. So good for dried on ketchup, dried on coffee, whatever it is that your kitchen might have on or your bathroom might have on the floor. We can put down some, some uh, Pepsi. I just did that behind the robot so it's clean before the camera can see it. Let's try it again. We'll put it down in front. There you go. The, um, the, the robot is putting down water scrubbing and vacuuming up the water. So mopping just doesn't make sense to me because you have a dirty bucket of water, you're spreading dirt around the floor, you're getting some of that dirt back up. But what this guy does, puts down clean water, scrubs, cleans the dirty, vacuums up the dirty water, and there you go. You've got a Roomba that uh, is set to um, Clean your wet, clean your kitchen. We call it Scuba, the Scuba 450, and we love it. Can, can we can we can we keep it on for a little while to get rid of these scuffs on the <laughs> on the top? Uh, both available now. Both available now. Yeah. The, the Scuba 450 launched yesterday. Sorry, we uh, ran so short on time, but always no a pleasure, problem. Colin. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. And uh, we'll be coming up shortly with the interview with Wowie. We'll we'll catch you guys soon. All right.